listen, I am not going to pretend that I am an anime expert in any capacity, but I have seen a few series and I'm familiar with the overall idea. Like this guy here is Goku, this one here is Shinji, and this here, this is cringe. With that in mind, it is impossible to ignore the cultural impact that anime has had here in the West in the last 30 or so years. It seems that nearly everything and everyone in the video game space is taking design choices and decisions from the Japanese animation industry. And with that, we've seen a wave of games based on various anime series. And no, I don't mean games that spawned anime like Pokemon, I mean an anime that spawned games. Now the easy route here would be to do one of those uh, Dragon Ball, Bukaki, Hentai things, or whatever they're called, or one of those Naruto games. But I figured instead, let's start off interesting and weird. And also on Dreamcast, this is Gundam, Rise from the Ashes, Side Story 0079, or it's Gundam, Side Story 0079, Rise from the Ashes, whatever it's called. This is the longest title I have seen in a very long time. Like the name would imply, this here is based on the Gundam franchise, specifically the Mobile Suit Gundam series. To be frank, I don't know much about Gundam, barring the fact that it's about giant robots and war crimes, and from what I gather, that's pretty much the plot. Also, there's Nazis or something? I, I don't know, Devin's been weebing out about this one for the past month on Twitter. With this concept, it seems pretty bulletproof. And from a presentation standpoint, so far so good. This debrief screen gives plenty of exposition and talks up some Gundam lore. I'm not going to lie, as someone unfamiliar, I was pretty lost, but it paints a straightforward enough picture to set up the stakes. Finally, I got into the game and, uh, hmm, okay. There's no polite way to put this. The controls are utterly abysmal. It's part that the robot is a fair bit slower than you'd expect, a part that they have a few different stances to cycle through depending on the combat mode you're in, but honestly, it's mainly that the Dreamcast controller just doesn't work well with these kind of first-person perspective games. See, you have to use both the D-pad and the analog stick to move and shoot, but uh, as I will now demonstrate, that might be easier said than done. Ow. Also, this game has a bit of a learning curve. Now, that's part because you die quite easily, but also that beside fighting enemy pilots yourself, you have to bark orders through the map screen to your comrades, which is an experience. When they do listen, it's great, and you can effectively dispatch enemies and secure objectives, but when they don't, things get foobar pretty fast. Also, the game forces itself in 4-3, even on VGA mode, so the POV here is very limited. Honestly, I've seen these kind of games work great, but on ultra-wide monitors with huge fields of view, or hell, in VR. I don't know, man. Between the bad controls, bad team mechanics, and bad FOV, this is a hard game for me to recommend. Maybe if you're a die-hard fan of the series, you'll get something out of it. Also, I do have to point out the current market value of the game. It's, uh... Not exactly cheap, so, um, hard pass. Maybe the next game will be better, and that game is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle for the PlayStation 3. Now, this is a surprise, but mainly because I thought the PS3 had no games. <laughs> all right, all right, easy jokes and internet boomer shit posts aside, this is based on the popular JoJo's Bizarre Adventure series, which started as a manga in 1987. And I, to be honest, I don't know a damned thing about it, barring the meme culture. Like, okay, okay, I know a few character names. I know they have some weird power called stands that lets them summon like a powerful familiar type thing. And I know that it's rather flamboyant as well, uh, shall we say, but barring that, like Gundam, I don't really know much. So imagine my amusement at this bombastic presentation. 
It's bright, colorful, loud, in your face. Damn, it's a visual onslaught, but it looks weirdly cohesive, like actual thought was put into this. When it comes to the game, it's a 1v1 3D fighting game of sorts, and it plays like one, but with one big flaw that holds it back. One really big issue that prevents it from being really good. It's running at a locked 30 frames per second. Before some smart Alec in the comments goes, Well, of course it's only 30 frames per second. It's on PlayStation 3. I'm gonna cut that line right there, neatly cut it, behead it. The standard for fighting games has been, since Street Fighter 2 in the arcades, 60 frames per second. For a lot of reasons, but primarily due to the ability to attach input data to frames to be able to combo. So with this, combined with the PS3's lovely HDCP extra input lag, which I'm not gonna get into here because you ain't ready for that rant yet, and I've always not on the podcast, go listen to insert title here. It, without a lot of input assist, this game just, it's very hard to chain moves together, okay? Can't we put it out there? Because you don't want that rant, you don't want that rant yet. I mean, the game is fine. Barring that oddity, it does still play okay. I love that I can mock my opponent when they're in a hard knockdown and lower their meter, and that it does make a pretty good attempt at explaining the world and lore to newcomers, even if it is mostly through text. It's fun to play, albeit very, very weird, but uh, honestly, I do not know half of what's going on here most of the time. But hey, this guy just threw an American flag and... Um, there's bits of something on the field, eh? I did do a little bit of research into this because I was wondering what was going on. And apparently those are parts of Jesus Christ. So I'm fighting with bits of our Lord and Savior. Bloody hell. Overall, it's solid. If I knew more, I think I'd get more out of it, since it seems that this game wants to be a solid JoJo experience, rather than a solid fighting game experience, if that makes any sense. Just don't overpay for this one. Physical copies are nutty these days, but digitally, it's still very much available on the PlayStation Store. Or at least it will be until Sony pulls support in an attempt to force you to buy the shiny new thing you can't even get. Moving along, I think I should go to a series that I actually know something about this time. So let's play Berserk and the Band of the Hawk from the folks at Tecmo Koei. I've simped for this series before, so I recommend watching my video from last summer on the first tie-in game for the series, Sword of the Berserk Guts Rage on Dreamcast. Like Jojo, this one seems very focused on introducing you to the lore of the series, but unlike Jojo, it goes through the effort to replay scenes, either through clips out of the Golden Age trilogy movies, or via these oddly stiff cutscenes. Gameplay-wise, since, well, this is a Tecmo game, it's a Musou experience. You know, those Dynasty Warriors type hack and slash things. Given the source material and that the plot starts in the Golden Age arc, which, you know, is filled to the brim with large scale battles, that totally works. There's a solid variety of characters, the combat is fluid, the presentation is fun. Yeah, this is a good time. There is a lot of game here though, and it appears to follow the manga pretty much all the way through, which uh, I guess sort of disqualifies it as an anime game since Berserk's never really had a good anime adaptation. Just pretend with me for a minute that the 97 series never ended and that's kind of the vibe. The voice acting is solid, the gameplay is great, okay I think we found a good one here. So good in fact that I had to force myself to stop playing it so I could finish off this video. It's a shame that the PS4 version is so damn expensive but hey when it's on sale this is totally a recommended purchase on Steam, and just for clarification, for this video I did indeed use the Steam version. This brings us nicely to our final game of the day, and I'm going to be honest, this is something that in the past a few mutuals have asked I look into. It is a game with a reputation, but not really in the way you'd expect. Like, it's, it's known for not being a great game, 
but what it's more known for is the copium. Ladies and gentlemen, we arrive at the finale. Jump Force. Imagine, if you will, that you are the publication company for various iconic series such as Dragon Ball, One Piece, and Naruto. You know, the ones so popular that even grandma knows them. Now, keep imagining that it's the 50th anniversary of your magazine that launched all of these series and you want to celebrate with a huge collaboration game featuring all of your iconic characters. Sounds like a good idea, right? You've even got Bandai Namco to develop it for you. Surely this is going to be aces, right? Well, this is what you got. You got Jump Force, a celebration of Shonen Jump, the weekly manga that launched monolith franchise after monolith franchise. Now, like I alluded to before, this game has a reputation for its diehard fan base. As small as they are, they are out there every day on Twitter defending it against the waves of criticism that it gets. Even right now, with a large part of the online component about to be turned off, they are out there on Twitter bigging this thing up. So, in all fairness, I had to play it because, you know, we were determined. Are they right? Or are we looking at the weeaboo equivalent of a Zack Snyder fanboy? My first impressions, uh, um, uh, well, uh, let me get back to you on that. It's taking a while to load. Okay, no, no, it's taking a small age to load. Neat. Ah, right, okay, into the game, and, uh, ooh, this, this looks rough, and frame rate drops are near constant. We're in the opening scene, the literal first impression, and the game is chugging like it's on a pub crawl. And what's up with this art style? It's like it tried to throw realistic textures into anime with a healthy dose of fireworks. Frankly, it looks both weird and borderline uncanny valley. Okay, well, maybe it's just this bit that's bad. Maybe it'll get better. This time it gets better. Are we still in a cutscene? God, can we just... <sighs> Ah, okay, good. Some random bystander that so happens to be the player character gets zapped by Frieza, and now, after the Rubik's Cube MacGuffin gets smushed into us, we get to create an avatar. I'm honestly not that big on this idea, since, you know, this is supposed to be a celebration of Shonen Jump. I want to be Goku, or One Punch Man, or Christ, I'll even embrace my inner child and take Mr. Satan, but no, no, I've got to make a character. Well, this is an anime game, so uh, let's make a waifu. And you all know that I'm a degenerate with a disposition to climb mountains, so uh, let's make Lady D from Resident Evil 8. That's her full name, right? Finally getting on with it now, and mm, okay, more loading. Perfect. Right, right, so after that, it's finally combat time. Or at least I think this is combat. It's very simplistic. Now, now, that's not a bad thing, since this is clearly trying to be a self-insert wish fulfillment thing, but it's very hard to keep track of what's going on, and it'd be great if the game could please stop dropping frames for one minute. This might actually be on me, because I did elect to play this on console, specifically I played this on a base Xbox One. However, after a little bit of research, all of the console versions, even when they're played on newer versions of those consoles, have this same problem. Now, a totally fair question would be, why didn't you just play it on PC, Adam? And that's totally valid, however, Right up until this thing being delisted, it was still full price on Steam, and um, this was 10 bucks at Goodwill. Besides the self-insert, the game boasts a pretty extensive roster of jump characters, some of which I know, and some I don't. But I see the fan service for what it is here, and to someone, sure, this is a nice touch. But to me, a lot of them just kind of blend together from a gameplay perspective. Great example. Goku's light heavy into beam combo here is the same as the one for Yurameshi, right down to the timing. To top it off, the characters that have a bit of uniqueness to them are usually quite awkward, until you realise that most of them have a pretty exploitable trick of some kind. I'm dancing around the main issue here. For all of the gameplay problems, for all of the slowdown, there's something which to me is the biggest problem and I just can't get past it. 
This game is ugly as fuck. Jesus Christ, stop looking at me. Holy God, that grief. Okay, okay. oof. I know I touched on it earlier with my Uncanny Valley comment, but this game is seriously unappealing to look at. The visual noise in battles is the tip of the problem iceberg. What makes it a downright sin is the character models. The best way to describe it is that the characters look like someone badly rigged them in Gmod for their fan series and then added a weird texture mod. Nobody blinks enough. Everyone looks like they're made out of plastic. This guy looks like he wants to eat my soul. Bloody Nora, it's a straight up eyesore. Funnily enough, Lady D is probably the best looking model in the game, which makes me wonder why they messed around so much with the licensed characters. Fan service aside, I have to ask, who is this game for? If you think it's for anime fans, particularly of certain series, well, most of these are pretty big names in that industry and have better games than this already available for them. And if you think it's meant for like non-hardcore anime fans who maybe want to investigate some of these series better, well, there's also beginner-friendly anime games for a lot of those series, which are significantly less jank, so I don't get it. Speaking of jank, the game just feels awkward at the best of times. Most animations are stiff, unnatural and plain weird. The faces, I've made very clear, are hell spawns. This is horrifying, whatever it is, and honestly at times, the game feels like it's on the verge of breaking. To be fair, that feeling might be coming from the fact that the mission assignment music sounds an awful lot like Sonic 06's forest themes sped up. I'm just projecting here. Sure, the game is far from good, but it hasn't actually broken on me yet. Right, let's get a new mission from the Gallery of Horrors here and, uh, um, game? Game? Hello? Did, did it just lock up? Look, this is, this is in the past, Adam, playing the game live, recording it. You hear the controller clickety clackety? Nothing is happening. I am not making this up. I am not fucking around. What? You know what? Miyazaki was right. Anime was a mistake. 